Well, to start making sense out of this new idea of induction, there's a device that comes up frequently in AP problems and tests. It's called the slide wire generator. It consists of a U-shaped conductor in a uniform magnetic field, and it's open at one end. And what it has is a conductor, a sliding conductor on it. And it's going to be moving to the right, and as it slides along, an induced EMF occurs in the wire, which produces a current. All right, and we're going to figure out what the size and direction of that induced EMF is. Well, there's a couple ways to think about this, so I'll briefly summarize them. You see you have a total path here. If you move this to the right, then you increase the area, thereby increasing the magnetic flux because the area has gone up. If you increase the magnetic flux in a given amount of time, Faraday says, you induce an EMF. You have a non-zero d phi sub e dt. Simple as that. But another way you can think about it is, hey, you've got this conductor here. It's got free charges in it. You're moving those free charges to the right. And hey, do you remember the QVB force? Of course you do. So each one of those charges are going to experience a QVB force. And that alone is going to enable you to figure out the direction. So if we move to the right, then Put your fingers into the screen in the direction of the magnetic field, point your thumb to the right, and you should see that it puts forces on the charges in this conductor upward. Right? Your palm is pointing upward. That should tell you that the current should move around counterclockwise around this path. All right, so I'm kind of jumping ahead of the game a little bit. I should probably just be talking about the change in the flux. As you move to the right, the conductor at the next moment is over here. And let's figure out what that distance is. Well, the distance is velocity times time. So we're going to have a differential time, VDT. So we can have a differential change in flux. So in DT, the rod moves V times DT. That's how far it moves. So that's this distance element. And then this is the length, the length over here. So length, or height times width, I guess we'll say, is area. So the change in area, delta A is L VDT. So there's our delta A. Now our direction for area, we're going to send into the page in the direction of the magnetic field. And then A is parallel to the magnetic field. That leads to a flux that's positive. So the flux is positive. And the flux is going up. Why? Because this area is getting larger. It was this much, and now it's this much. It's got a greater expanse. So flux has gone up. If flux goes up, that tells you something about the direction of the induced quantity. And d phi sub b is equal to b dA. And dA is LV dt. So there is our differential flux, and the EMF induced is minus d phi sub b dt. So you just take this quantity and divide by dt, and you get minus blv, and there's our result. So that is the EMF induced by a moving wire of in magnetic field B times the length of the wire times its velocity. It's a very useful result. And going back to the idea of the induced quantity. All right, if you put your if you take this area vector and do the right hand rule on it. Well, your thumb is in the direction into the screen. Your fingers wrap around in this direction. And this formula tells us that the current is actually going the other way. So by this induced right hand rule method we should get counterclockwise current which is consistent with the fact that the force on the charges in this conductor are upward causing a counterclockwise current so it's all consistent this is the direction of EMF and the current induced in the slide wire generator let's just investigate the intricacies of this slide wire generator a wee bit more 
So, and we'll show that the energy that it dissipates in producing current is equal to the work in order to move the actual conductor along. Now, this is really huge. This is a conservation of energy principle. And, you know, nature never allows perpetual motion machines. It always requires the conservation of energy be maintained. You don't get something for nothing which puts hard limits on the kind of forces that are involved in moving this along. Wouldn't it be great if you could take this thing, give it a shove at velocity v, and it just continued to slide all by itself? Well, you'd get, you could light light bulbs for nothing that way, couldn't you? It doesn't work that way. The direction of force on this conductor that's required to move it along is such that it's always going to resist your motion. It needs to do that. If it went, went the other way, you'd have a perpetual motion machine. But it's really easy to understand in terms of fundamental principles of force what the direction is as well. So here's the situation that we had. And we have the area vector and the magnetic field in the same direction. Flux is positive and it's increasing. And the EMF is minus d phi sub e dt, which is minus BLV, as we just found. BLV, nice simple expression for induced EMF. Now power is I squared R, or V squared over R, uh, but I is V over R, okay? So we can just express that as EMF over R squared times R. So power equals EMF squared over R which is minus quantity BLV squared over R, given us B squared, L squared, V squared over R. So that's the power dissipated as a result of the current that's flowing in this. So again, just validating the direction of forces here. <clears throat> so we, we understood the QVB force. This rod with the, with the charges moving to the right produces forces, using our open hand rule, upward, causing a current to flow upward in this conductor. Now apply the ILB force because we now have a current flowing and that current is in a magnetic field and it's perpendicular to it. So we're going to apply that idea. Let's do it right now. So put your fingers in the direction of the B field into the screen, and then your, your thumb is pointing upward here along the conductor. Where does your palm point? That's right, your palm points to the left, which means that the magnetic force on the current carrying conductor is to the left. That's the condition that occurs when this thing is moving to the right. So you as an external agent have to pull on this thing in the direction of motion because it's putting a force in the opposite direction. So as soon as you let go, this thing wants to come to rest relatively rapidly. Obviously how rapidly depends on a number of conditions. So applied power. Now that the buzzer went off back there, I think my wife's pie is just about ready to come out of the oven or maybe it's going to go in. Blackberry pie, I think? Oh yeah, I better hurry up and get this recording done so I can have some. So here we go. Applied power. Power is force times velocity. Simple enough. Now the force that we have to overcome is simply the ILB force. The IL cross B force, which is just ILBV since everything's perpendicular here. So that's the size of the force. And there's the velocity. Well, current is... EMF over R, so it's EMF over R, LBV, and EMF, as we discovered, is BLV, so BLV over R, LBV, giving us B squared, L squared, V squared over R, and conservation of energy has reigned supreme once again.